been three years since we've seen this badge. It's still one of the finest in the game of paintball. The Planet Eclipse E-Tech 4, a stack tube workhorse that can and will outperform the player, is now closer than ever before to its big brother, the Ego series. However, unlike its more expensive kin, the E-Tech line has always had just as strong of a presence in the woods as it has on the airball field. The look of this most recent incarnation is leaner, somehow more aggressive, with deeper body cuts, a shortened regulator, and flushed up eye plates. Is this new E-Tech worth your money? Well, let's find out. Hi, I'm Jay from HustlePaintball.com, and today we have a video on the E-Tech 4 by Planet Eclipse. Now, the E-Tech markers are always a very solid, very good entry-level line of markers. Uh, in addition to going over the maintenance and how you take your marker apart, we're actually going to be talking to some members of the Hustle Paintball team, Team Anomaly, on what they actually think about the marker, having played with it a couple days. Now, one of the things I did want to point out, Planet is very, always very big on their presentation of their markers, the box, the case it comes in, all that stuff, which we'll get into a little bit later. But one of the things I did um, notice when we were uh, doing this review is you may not be able to see it on the video, but here on the side are all these icons for the different features that the marker has. Um, one does stick out a little bit. Uh, it's this one right here. It says ZIC1 uh, because it's wrong. Uh, the marker actually comes with the ZIC2 kit already installed, so pay no attention to that uh, if you were to uh, get your E-Tech box and see it there. It just, it's incorrect. So we're going to take it out of the box and we're going to show you what's inside and what you get for the money. So let's open the box up and show you what you get. Now, Plan's always been very big both on their presentation of their packaging as well as what you actually get for your money in addition to the marker. It's one of the great charms of the company and in addition to the fact that their markers just run like clocks, you get a lot for your money. So, let's go into that. Open it up with some good sturdy zippers. Now, I have owned both an E-Tech and an Ego. Um, I will admit, sometimes the zip, the, zip, the zip pulls actually break off, but it's really not that huge a deal. I think I've replaced mine a couple times now with paper clips or something, but not a huge deal, just something to be mindful of. All right, the marker itself, as well as all the things you get. First up, and this is a new thing for the E-Tech 4s, is the Immortals DVD. This is a, uh, a video series that Planet has produced for a wide range of pro teams, both in Europe and America. Uh, it's very much in a similar uh, spirit to the PB Fashion videos. Um, very good videos, one of my favorites. Uh, I re really enjoy watching them. Uh, and you know, I'll, as paintballers, we always like a well-produced well video because we all know it's made for us and, you know, really by other paintballers, kind of nice. Next is the manual. Planet's manuals are just stellar. Like, you don't need a service center when one of these manuals are around, so long as you can follow the instructions. But, um, having fixed a few Planet markers, there is one thing in the back that I really like that a lot of companies don't put in. Uh, in addition to exploded view of their marker, where is it? It is this thing. Here we go. This. This page is important. Now, not only does it list all the screws and all the hardware, but more importantly, all the O-rings. And more to the point, all the O-rings are the physical size that they would be in your marker. So if you find one of these, a 7013, in your marker, it's gonna be 7013. It's gonna be this big. It's just a nice touch, they're printed in real size. Now, speaking of O-rings, 
all the O-rings that you will ever need. All the ones that we just showed a picture of in here are in here. You just do a bunch of other parts, extra screws, and an extra poppet. So it's just, you get so much, uh, so much stuff to repair your marker on the unlikely event that it does break and start to leak. Of course, the barrel bag, gotta be safe. Planet's oil. Now we'll go into how this is actually using the marker here in just a moment, but you do get this for free. Now, since this does have uh, regulators here and here, you are also gonna need grease. They don't include that, but you probably won't need it when you first buy it, and you'll need it down the road. And when you do, they have a space for it, which is also a first. Last up is Planet's tool tube. Now, Planet does not give you whack cheap wrenches. These are good ball end wrenches that you can use when they're not in a straight vertical up and down position, you know, perpendicular to the screw. This is important because pretty much uh, every screw you're going to ever use in paintball, you're not going to be able to just be straight up and down on it. So it's just uh, little touches like that which are pretty charming. Then of course, the marker itself, as well as the shaft for barrel. Now, if you uh, put your barrel on wrong sometimes, it's okay. I've owned one of these markers for a couple years now, and it just happens. So, put it on. Oh, the other way. See, for example. Yes, there, third time's a charm, okay. Now, here we go. This is the part we all actually wanted to see. So, the marker itself. I'm gonna try not to hold it in front of my shirt too much, so it doesn't just look like it's black on black. So, some of the new features, the new, the new on-off ASA with this new big grippy knob, we, re we really like this here. Uh, underneath it, it's really very similar to the ASA you get on Planet's more expensive markers, like the Geo and the Ego. Um, other than this threaded uh, bit right here, it's, it's a pops. It moves back and forward and activates the pin the exact same way, just this one is threaded. So, that's pretty nice. It's also found on the Etha. So, following the macro line up, the SL3 reg, just like on the Etha, the Geo and the Ego. Every single one of Planet's markers now has the same regular regulator and the same barrel, the shaft four on it. So another nice feature that they've had. Um, of course, you know, a good clamping feed neck, the bolt out the back that we've been be become familiar with, um, and the other fairly significant new feature, which we'll get into here next, is the Zik 2 with the new rammer cap. This was uh, originally featured on Planet's more expensive markers. It does pretty noticeably um, positively affect both the recoil uh, and the sound of the marker. When we were out playing with it um, and recording stuff for the film that you saw a little bit earlier, it was it didn't sound like that the E-Tech cannon noise that we've all heard for years. So it's just it's a pretty charming new feature, um, despite its uh, despite the uh, marketing problem they had with the box. Um, it's just it's nice. It's a good thing. So yeah, let's get into the insides, the Zik 2, and all the internal parts of the marker right now. Since I presumed you guys didn't want to watch me unscrew some screws, we just skipped it. So. Once you have those two screws removed, make sure you take your macro line out, something I'm sure you guys know how to do. It should come away. And now, when you actually separate these, you got to be pretty mindful of your wires, which you should have just unhooked. You know, pull them out very slowly, make sure they don't get caught on anything, because if you rip them out, it's both expensive and you feel stupid. So, there. Take your grip, set it to the side here. All right. So now we have the body of the marker, as well as the regulator. Now, we'll just point out some of the features here that you guys probably already know about, but you know what? It's good to go over them anyway. First, of course, the solenoid. These are not user serviceable. Do not monkey around in here. Um, the only service you may need to do is if it's leaking between the manifold and the solenoid, they do have a replacement O-ring in that little parts kit. So if you do need to, it does come with a new one. The manifold here, this controls where the air actually flows in the marker as the rammer cycles back and forth. The low pressure line, which runs forward, to the torpedo here, which actually allows the air to come from the LPR and into the marker and operate the marker. As you go up, we have the rammer in here, which we'll take out in just a moment. The cure bolt itself, which slides free. I don't know if you guys can see it that well, but yeah, I mean, it's a cure bolt, so works great, pretty much prevents most ball problems. Not that planet markers are notorious for chopping balls in the first place, but they're pretty solid. As we saw in the film at the beginning, the eye plates here are flushed up and they cover the eyes. Surprise, surprise. Underneath them are the electronic sensors that prevent the marker from actuating if there's not a ball loaded properly. Now, the other thing that's under here, and this is a part you may actually need to change, is right here. It's this little black oval. These are the ball detents. 
You just prevent the balls from rolling out and being seated poorly in the marker, which stops chops. So, just to show you exactly where it is, ah, so there you go, right here, this thing, this little black oval, these are the ball detents. So if you do have to change them, they do wear out every couple years, sometimes sooner, but depending upon your level of play, that's what you do. You just pop them out and change them. Going forward, you have the low pressure regulator and of course the SL3 that we talked about earlier. Now we're going to actually take the SL3 off and the LPR off and we're going to show you what it's like to in show you what it's like inside them as well as what you need to do to maintain them. The SL3 reg is a much simpler and in my opinion improved design mostly for the simplicity and ease of servicing it yourself. The first thing you're going to notice, it's been this way on Planet Marcus for a while, but there was a time when it wasn't, are these adjustment marks. These are actually going to tell you which direction you need to uh, move your adjustment screw to change your velocity, which is nice because when you're standing at the chrono, you don't have to ask every passerby if they happen to know what the correct direction is. Now to get all your internals out, just take your 1 8 inch Allen key, go into the bottom here, screw the adjustment screw this way up towards the top, and the internals will all slide out just like that. Now, what the, what the actual internal parts of the regulator are, are the piston, reg spring, adjuster top, the adjustment screw, and then there's the actual valve itself inside. You don't have to mess with those very often. Uh, so we won't go into that at, right now. Lightly apply uh, your lubrication of choice uh, to the entire surface of the regulator. I, of course, prefer Pathogen Super Grease. I think it's the best. Um, of course, there are some other options, but that'd be my recommendation. Once it's all put back together, it comes apart pretty simply. These are all the internal parts. That's pretty much as far apart as you need to take it to adjust it. They go back together just the same way. Spring on the outside, into the adjuster top. Get your, get your reg housing, put it back in like that. Now, to actually adjust it back in place, hold it on this side, push it, push down here while threading it back down. And it should, you'll feel it move under your finger. And once you feel that the actual threads catch, you can start to actually go a little bit faster. And the other thing we'll go over here really briefly is how to actually reset it once you have, uh, once you've adjusted it, once you've serviced it, because you will have to every time. So you want to get the bottom of this screw right here. You want it flush with the bottom of the reg. Once it's flush, take the same Allen key, of course, put it in there, turn it two and a half times, you know, back in the opposite direction. So it'd be one, two and a half, and there you go. It's reset to factory. It'll be safe when you put it back on your marker. The LPR protrudes out of the front of the body of the E-Tech 4 right here. Now, for the purposes of our video, to actually maintain it, all you need to do is just unscrew it. Now, be careful because it's under spring tension. Um, just unscrew it, which I'll show you in a second. However, if you are, if it is leaking from inside the marker, there is another way you can do it. You shouldn't have to very often. You'll know when you do. To do that, there's a screw right there. That is a screw. You unscrew that and you can take the LPR and the exhaust valve and pretty much the entire heart of the Ego out. So uh, you don't need to pretty much ever, but in case, if for any reason you do, that's the screw that you need to take out. All right, for the purposes of our video, I'm just going to unscrew this. Like I said, it's, it is under a little bit of spring tension, so just be mindful of that. It'll leap into your hand a little bit. Go ahead and unscrew it. All right, take that, put it out of the way. Now inside there's really only three parts uh, to this. It's a pretty simple mechanism. Pull out the piston. There will be two springs and the rig piston. Look at that. Fortunately, uh, the, new, the springs on these newer Egos are both different size and different colors. They weren't that way in some of the older ones, which uh, could lead to some amusing problems if you put them back in the wrong way. So the springs themselves, of course, the adjuster spring here, piston and then the reg spring itself. Just like on the HPR, light, lightly lube it up with uh, your lubricant of choice. Again, Pathogen Super Grease is the one you should uh, most strongly consider. Lube them up gently, put them back together the same way. Gold one goes on the piston here, and the silver one goes in the front. Put it back in the housing. Should seat itself pretty naturally. 
and screw it back on. As you may have guessed, as it is under spring tension, you will have to get that first thread kind of started. But once you do, screw it all the way back down, and it should be all good. Now you can adjust your LPR using this screw, which I'll see, make, see if I can uh, let you see it. Here we go. This screw right here, that does allow you to adjust it. But generally speaking, you don't have to. So, you know, just leave it alone unless you're having other problems with your marker. New to the E-Tech series is the Planet Eclipse Zik 2 kit. Now, this was originally featured on Planet's higher end uh, markers, but has finally filtered its way down to the E-Tech. It will both reduce the kick of the marker, uh, as well as the sound signature. Now, it's pretty painless to get out. Just take the cap off the back here, unscrew it, and the Zik will come right out with, with a little bit, of, uh, little bit of prodding. The best way to get it out is take the same Allen key that you just used, and hook it on the slot here. Push on it, and it'll pop the zip right out. There we go. Come out right like that. Now, as you can see here on the camera, I believe, there you go. You can actually see it says Z2 right on there. So, one of the big, uh, the big improvements is this part on the back, this bumper. This is actually what stops it on the rearward stroke of the rammer from impacting the back of the marker and causing a little bit of recoil effect, as well as you, you will, there's no way you guys will be able to see it, but you just have to trust me, it's in there. There's a polyurethane O-ring that's actually in the back of the cap, and that has a, a pretty good effect as well. This is one of the parts of the marker that you use the oil on because it's a very high-speed part. Um, you know, oil this, don't put grease on it, or you'll cause problems. Now, just to illustrate a little bit about how this works, we're going to take the actual bolt, and this will let you see kind of what it looks like inside the marker. So bolt itself, whoops, we'll flip on right here, and that's how it actually is oriented in the marker when the marker is cycling back and forth. So just, just a little, little nice uh, visual demonstration of it. The other reason this is pertinent is because when you put it back in, you have to make sure the part that the bolt hooks onto is towards the front. If you put it in backwards, it will fit, but it will not work properly. So make sure you put it back in right. And just to demonstrate that, take it, again, the slotted part towards the front, put it back in the marker, take the rammer cap, put it back on, and tighten it down. Now, you don't need to crank down on this rammer cap too hard. Once it gets to, the, gets to as far as it wants to go, it will stop. Don't keep going. There, right there. Finger tight is good enough. And that is pretty much all you need to know about the Zik 2 kit. There's one other thing I wanted to go over while we were talking about uh, reinstalling the rammer. And that is how to put the bolt back in right. Because putting it back in wrong is something that happens fairly often. Now, the key here is once you slide this bolt back in with the bolt pin up, there's a little dot. Now, it's actually easier on the on E-Tex the e because of how the back of the bolt is cut to match the body. Uh, but there's a little dot right here. You want that to be just inside the visible portion of the housing. Once it's there, you should press down and it should lock on the rammer. Now, how you check this slide the bolt forward and you should probably you guys probably can't see that at home maybe a little bit uh, you should be able to actually see the rammer and not the notched part it should physically you should be able to physically see it move back and forth it's important because if you fire the marker without it uh, and the bolt pin to press down it's going to go forward and it's going to hit against the housing of the body and it's just in addition to making awful noise it's a little hard on the marker it's actually one of the few ways uh, you can harm your marker if you do it a lot so make sure it's installed right and you should be all good here we have the grip frame. Now, there's not a huge amount that you can actually say about a grip frame. I mean, come on, it's where you hold your marker. But there are a couple things I wanted to go over because they're going to be pertinent to you guys. Now, the first is once you open it, and this is another one of these amusing things we notice. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, this says ETEC 3. Um, it's not, actually. I'm pretty confident uh, Planet is just using their old stickers. This is actually ETEC 4. Uh, just the old sticker, the blink codes, all that stuff, it's still current. Just ignore this amusing uh, typo. Mm. Now, moving on, I'll try to bring it up here so you guys can see it. Uh, there's a little brown button right here. This is the tournament lock. Now, if you're in a tournament, this is how you set it to whatever your format is and engage it so you can't change the settings so the refs don't get upset. But what's more important to most end users is the fact that once you get your marker, you are not going to be able to change any settings until you turn it off. It comes engaged from the factory. So with that in mind, 
you know, turn your marker on with the grip open, press this button once, then you'll be able to change your settings. Uh, it's just one of those things that you learn after after owning a couple of these that it's just you're, it's one of the things you're going to want to do immediately. Moving on to the next, and the only other really pertinent part to uh, E-Tech ownership is it does have a three-point adjustable trigger. Now, I'll do my best to point and show you guys where these things are, uh, but it is a case of black on black. Um, the first tr the first screw right here, this is going to adjust the backstop, which is how far the trigger will go when you depress it, where it will come to a rest. All right? On the top here are two more. The front one, you can actually feel the magnet underneath it. This is, a, is the trigger return strength. So as you adjust this screw, the amount of force that the trigger is going to want to pull back against your finger with will change. The screw right behind it is the return stop. That, much like the screw down here, this one is going to return, is going to control where the trigger comes to rest on the forward stroke. All right? Now, there's no right way to adjust your trigger. It's all completely personal preference. So my advice is the same I've always, I've always told people. When it comes to triggers, it's whatever's comfortable. Go, take your marker, sit it on, sit it on the couch with it, just play around with it with an Allen key until you get it the way you want. There's no right way. So with that in mind, we're gonna put the marker together and we're gonna talk to, uh, talk to some people and see what they think about the marker. So here we are with Ethan Hall of the Hustle Paintball Team, Team Anomaly. I just wanted to ask him a couple questions about his thoughts on the E-Tech. Uh, you guys saw him earlier in the play footage on uh, the airball field at our local field, uh, Blitz Paintball. So, you know, first things first, what are your initial impressions of the e of the E-Tech 4? I know you are coming from uh, both your SL and before that an E-Tech 2. So what are some of the differences? Well, it's definitely better than my E-Tech 2, and I love my E-Tech 2 quite a bit. Uh, I think Jeff actually said it best. Uh, the changes aren't necessarily revolutionary but evolutionary. You know, they have the cool slick features that I'm sure the guys have talked to you about. You know, the uh, improved ASA, the nice uh, streamlined look of the bottom line, of course the shaft four barrel. My biggest thing that I like is the Zik 2. Definitely reduces the kick. And the thing is, this is just a natural progression where the E-Tech is gone. If they, you know, put a higher price tag on it, it wouldn't make sense, but Eclipse didn't do that. They're smart, they're cool. And so it came in right at the exact same price point of the previous generation, the E-Tech 3. Uh, when I shot it, it definitely felt good. You know, it's a brand new gun needs to have a little bit of a break-in period a couple cases definitely gonna uh, settle in a little bit more uh, and of course you know we didn't have that much time to just roll out and shoot four cases through it and be like oh it feels a lot better already you know so we definitely felt that other than that it's you know the same old uh, standard design that I really love just next uh, next step in the evolution well you know I had a couple other questions uh, written but um well, you answered all of them. So uh, I think we can go and uh, get Russell, bring him in, and let you guys see what he has to say about it. Hey, man, you asked me what I thought. Told you, I think it's a great gun. All right, we just had we just talked with Ethan. Now we're going to talk to Russell, also from the, the Hustle Paintball Team, Team and Online. So just like the question I asked Ethan, you know, what's your what's your initial impressions after having played with it a little bit out in the out in the woods? Alrighty. Well, first of all, I'm not going to be as worried as Ethan. I'll be short and to the point. Um, I came from an E Tech Two as well. And absolutely loved that, and this is definitely um, you know a nice upgrade from that too. I know I skipped a three or skipped over a three. Um, it's awesome. It does uh, it does take a little bit of breaking in, like what Ethan was explaining. Um, it was a little uh, a little say hoopty, but uh, it wasn't you know ball on ball right away. It does take a little breaking in, so that's something to keep in mind. But it, it was it was, a, it was a blast to play with, and uh, you know shoot shoot some ropes uh, on the airball field. I know you guys saw some footage of that. And uh, it was fun running down the snake and running down the field with this. And, you know, it's, it's a plain Eclipse marker. And this is uh, this was, um, like, my fifth or sixth marker I've got to use of plain Eclipse. I've owned several and uh, love them. I mean, planet markers are uh, the way to go. So, love it. It's an E-Tech. Flat out. Fantastic. So, uh, you said you've owned several planet markers. What one do you currently own? Um, currently, I own I'm old school here. Um, I own an SL66. And I absolutely love it. Um, Technology-wise, this is a huge, huge improvement. But uh, again, all plant markers kind of shoot uh, relatively the same. But uh, yeah, I was 66. Awesome. I'm old, old man, gun-wise. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see if we can go find someone else to ask. Right on, man. So, Trevor, I just have one question for you. Um, when you shoot an electronic marker, uh, what uh, what marker do you shoot? Uh, Ego SO74. Ah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, Mr. Hall. When you shoot an electronic marker, what one do you shoot? I didn't realize the camera was going to point it at me. <laughs> <laughs> USS 94. SL66. All Planet Eclipse markers here at Hustle Paintball. 
That's interesting. What do you shoot? I shoot a uh, Planet Eclipse Ego 11. <laughs> whatever. New good ever. Whatever. Trevor. Yeah, I'm, I'm too cool to use older guns. It's actually coming to the microphone. You. Yeah. <laughs> the E-Tech 4. You know, we heard from some actual paintballers. You know, we've you've you've watched the video, you've seen me take it apart. You know, I don't I, I don't want to say this is you know uh, just uh, it's it's not a revolution. This is very much an evolution of the line. It's taken all the all the parts from Planet's big boy guns and brought them down, much like they did on the Etha to the Etex platform. So it, it, there's, you get a lot of value for this marker. Uh, of course, you know if you get a chance to actually handle one, that's the best thing to do. Uh, because there's no way you can just watch our videos and just know if you're going to like it. So if you get a chance to handle one, by all means, please do. It'll be the best way to really, really get the feel for the marker. If you have any, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at videos at hustlepaintball.com. And of course, you can always get this or any other fine piece of paintball equipment at Hustle Paintball. Now, with that in mind, if you just want to give us a call, you want to ask the opinions of a fellow paintballer, uh, if you just want to know what we think or what we think would be good for your particular situation, you can call us anytime, send us an email. We, will be, we, we take a great deal of pride and uh, diligence in responding to these emails. Of course, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and read our blog. The blog's pretty unique because it's one of the things that we, we actually use as a, uh, a way to show what's going on, the, going on behind the scenes here at Hustle, some of our, very, some of our more personal opinions. Um, it's just a more, I don't know, intimate view of Hustle Paintball. Now, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. The reason being, in addition to you know all of the great videos that we've had in the past, we're really stepping up our production values. It's going to be it, it's going to be a new day here at Hustle. We're going to be increasing uh, the quality of our videos. Um, maybe not the quantity per se, but the ones that we are going to make are going to be much nicer, much more more pleasant to watch. You know, this video and a little bit of the one right before Theta was just a taste. So you know, as always, the last and most important part. Uh, is PB right because forums, communities, paintball is you know I would say it's a cult, so that's the best way to describe it. And PB Riot, well, it's a place for to find and interact with your fellow cultists, I guess. Um, so make sure you go and check it out. We'll there will definitely be some talk about this marker and this video there. All right, guys, we will see you on the next next go around. <laughs>